let's discuss some things you can do to protect wireless networks. I happen to think that wireless networks are fantastic. They make setting up a network really easy, especially if you're trying to deploy a network in an existing structure where you would have to pull wire through the walls if you wanted to set up a wired network. Wireless networks make that a trivial task. Now, understand, however, that there are certain security considerations that you need to keep in mind when implementing a wireless computer network. If you don't keep these things in mind, then it is possible to make your network vulnerable to intruders. Let's take a look at some of the issues associated with wireless networks. To understand the risks associated with a wireless network, you first need to understand the basics of how a wireless network works. Now, if I were going to set up a wired network, I would have, if it was an Ethernet wired network, I would have some kind of connecting point in the middle called a hub or a switch, and I would connect all the workstations to it. Then, if one workstation needed to send data to another workstation or another server, the information would travel up the wire to the hub or switch and then be propagated back down to the appropriate system. Well, a wireless computer network works in much the same fashion. The difference, however, is that we eliminated the wires. We took all the wires out and replaced them with a radio signal. Data that's being sent is transmitted via radio signal up to the wireless access point and then back from the wireless access point to the appropriate system that needs to receive that information. The risk associated with wireless networks is based on this factor right here, the fact that we're using a radio signal. Think about it. What happens if we broadcast a radio signal? It goes out in every direction for a certain distance, right? The radios inside of your wireless access points and your wireless workstations work in exactly the same way. They broadcast a radio signal to the entire world, not just to the wireless access point, for a certain distance, whatever the range is associated with your particular wireless network. That means that somebody sitting outside your building with the appropriate equipment could also join your wireless network because he or she can receive that same signal that's being transmitted around inside your building. And this leads to two of the key risks associated with wireless networks. Number one, unauthorized use. In other words, this person out here connects to your wireless access point with their radio and their wireless workstation, and then they use your network, most likely to use your internet connection. That is one issue. The second issue is that of snorting. Snorting is very similar to sniffing on a wired network. On a wired network, a sniffer has a network board that is configured to run in promiscuous mode, captures all the packets that are transmitted on the network medium, and decodes them and lets you view other people's data. Snorting works in a very similar manner on a wireless network. We have a system outside here that is sitting there listening to all the radio signals that are being transmitted as part of this wireless network and capturing them or snorting them in, decoding them and letting you see what's going on inside the wireless network. It's capturing data, some of which you may not want to be captured. It could have usernames, passwords, it could have credit card numbers, banking numbers, financial information, sensitive news, things like that. We don't want getting out. Now, does this mean that a wireless network is insecure and you should never use it? Not necessarily. Yes, it is insecure if you don't configure it correctly. If you do configure it correctly, however, it is reasonably secure, reasonably secure enough for most organizations to go ahead and use. Let's talk about some things you can do to protect your wireless computer network. The first thing you absolutely must do is implement encryption. You see, by default, those radio signals that are carrying your network data are broadcasted without any encryption, meaning that anybody who has snorting software running can capture that information and they can read it very easily. With encryption, we use the concept of a key to scramble the data. Only the systems who have the same key can unencrypt or decrypt data that can be read by the other systems. A lot like when you're in grade school. If you ever made a key in grade school and said, okay, we're going to pass notes and we don't want to get caught, so we're going to say A equals 
B, B equals C, and so on, to write notes using an encryption key. Well, it's a very simple example, but the same basic thing happens with wireless networks. We can take our data, encrypt it, scramble it, so that before we transmit it, it's changed. Only the system that has the right key can do this. Only the system that has the right key can unencrypt the data so it can be read again. Someone who's sitting there snorting, they'll just see garbage characters. They won't be able to decrypt the information. You have two different options for implementing encryption on a wireless computer network. The first one is called WEP, which stands for Wired Equivalent Privacy. Wired Equivalent Privacy, or WEP, used to be the default way to encrypt data on a wireless network. In fact, it still is probably the default way with most home-grade wireless computer networking equipment. WEP uses a key, as we've discussed with encryption, to encrypt data before it's transmitted on the radio signal. Now, WEP is considered pretty much mostly secure. It works okay. However, it does have a few weaknesses. One of the weaknesses is the fact that whenever WEP creates a network packet to be transmitted, it includes part of the key, the encryption key, unencrypted at the beginning of the network packet, and then the encrypted data follows. The problem with this is that if a person sits outside and snorts enough packets from your radio signals, many times, not all the time, but many times, they can gather enough data to reassemble the full network key, and by doing that, they can then de fully decrypt all the data that's coming across, and your network data is compromised. Another problem with WEP is the fact that it uses the same key on every machine all the time. In other words, you create a key for the wireless access point, you copy that key to, the, to each wireless network board, and it never changes. It's always the same. That's why people can sit there and snort for a long time and eventually get your key, because it's the same key. It's the same key you were using last month, same key you were using six months ago. A better alternative, and if you're setting up a wireless network in an organization, you should probably not use WEP if you have the option not to, and instead use WPA. WPA stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. This is a much better encryption method than WEP. WPA addresses most of the weaknesses that were found with WEP encryption. WPA does not include part of the key at the beginning of every packet so people can snort. In addition, it also rotates the key all the time. So you only use the same key for a short period of time, then a new one is created. And all the systems are automatically updated with the new key. Because of this, we'll say that WPA is secure. In addition, with WPA, you can configure user authentication. With WEP, there is no authentication. The system just lets everybody on who's got the right key. With WPA, you do have to log in with a username and password. Again, that makes WPA encrypted wireless networks much more secure. Another thing you can do to protect your wireless computer network is to disable DHCP on the wireless access point. Now, for convenience, most wireless access points have a little built-in DHCP server, which dynamically assigns IP addresses, gateway addresses, subnet masks, and DNS addresses whenever a computer on the wireless network starts up. It makes it very nice for you as a network administrator. The problem with that is, is that it makes it very easy for somebody who's sitting outside your building, listening in on your wireless network communications, to attach their computer to your network, because they simply have to make the connection, and then DHCP will provide them with an IP address, with a subnet mask, with a default gateway address, DNS server address, everything they need to participate on your network. So one option you can use to protect your networks is to disable DHCP. With DHCP disabled, your outside person who's trying to get in on your network has to try to figure out what IP addressing scheme you're using, what your subnet mask is, what your gateway server address is, and what your DNS server address is. If the person doesn't have that information, it's very unlikely that they will be able to determine that on their own, hence it adds a layer of security. However, this also adds a layer of work for you, because that means you're going to have to manually configure all of your wireless workstations with a static IP address, with subnet mask, gateway address, DNS server address. Okay? Adds more work on your part, but it does increase your security. Another thing you should do that's really not optional is change 
your SSID. The SSID is an identifier used by a wireless access point to identify it. It is used as a very, very, very basic security measure because your workstation has to know what that SSID is in order to participate on the network. The problem here is that most wireless access points from well-known wireless access point manufacturers use a default SSID. And depending on the manufacturer, it's a different default. It might be wireless, it might be a network, or something like that. The problem is, is that if you go on the internet, you can look up what all the default SSIDs are for every wireless access point manufacturer, and hence that becomes a negligible security method. So change your SSID from the default value to something else. The next thing you should do is disable your SSID broadcast. This is very important. Remember that we said that the SSID is a very basic level of security. It's not much, but it's something because in order for a wireless network card in a workstation to connect to a wireless network, it has to be configured with the SSID of the wireless access point. Well, unfortunately, by default, most wireless access points actually broadcast this SSID to everybody who wants to hear it. They sit there and sing, my name is default, my name is default, my name is default. You don't have to even worry about trying to figure out what the SSID is. It's handed to you on a silver platter if SSID broadcast is enabled. If you want to increase the security of your network, disable the SSID broadcast. That will make it much more secure. You'll make it much harder for someone standing outside your company with a wireless network card to actually connect to your wireless network. Another thing you can do, this one is kind of like our DHCP option. It really works well, but it also in increases your workload dramatically. And that is to enable MAC address filtering. To understand MAC address filtering, you need to understand that every network board that's ever manufactured in the entire world has a unique code assigned to it. That means no two network boards in the entire world, theoretically, although I ha have heard of occasions where it has happened, but it's very rare. Theoretically, no two network boards in the entire world should have the same identifier. This allows us to uniquely identify a particular network board globally. This is called the MAC address. The MAC address is unique to every single card. Using your wireless access point, you can enable MAC address filtering. In other words, you go into your wireless access point and say, I will only allow systems that have these MAC addresses to connect to my wireless network. That is a very powerful security feature because if somebody's sitting outside trying to connect to your wireless network and their MAC address isn't in the list that you provided, which it won't be because you went around to your, each one of your workstations and got them at their MAC address and put it in, they can't connect. The problem with enabling MAC addresses is that it increases the work on your part. Let's say somebody brings a laptop from home and needs to work on it at your organization. Well, instead of being able to just bring the system in, turn it on, and connect to the wireless network, you've got to go into your wireless access point and specify that that new MAC address be allowed. Likewise, when a laptop or wireless system leaves your company, you have to go back into your wireless access point and remove that MAC address. It increases the administrative overhead on your part, but it also dramatically increases the security of your wireless network. That's a call I'm going to let you make as to whether you want to implement that or not. The next thing we need to do is to implement password protection on the wireless access point. Most wireless access points will allow you to set up a password so that you have to authenticate in order to get in and make any changes to the wireless access point. This is really important because most wireless access points come with a default username and a default password or no password for getting into the wireless access point configuration utility. If you don't change that, then someone else outside who manages to connect your network could potentially access the wireless access point configuration utility and change all of your settings to give them more access. So if you haven't already, make sure that it's password protected and then change the password from the defaults to something else so that somebody else can't get on. Another thing you ought to do is enable the WAP firewall. Most wireless access points come with a built-in firewall. They're designed for connecting the wireless network 
to some other network, whether it be a DSL internet connection or a cable modem internet connection or just a corporate ethernet network. You can enable a firewall on the wireless access point that will prevent traffic from coming in from the wired network into the wireless network unless it's authorized and likewise control traffic out of the wireless access point onto the wired network. Again, this is a security measure. This will prevent someone who has managed to get onto your wireless network from springboarding from there into your wired network. And the last thing you should do is keep your wireless access point firmware up to date. As we said just a minute ago, all the software that controls all the functionality of the wireless access point is contained in a chip inside the wireless access point called firmware. This firmware, just like any software, needs to be updated because it's probably got a few bugs in it and might have some security holes. Every now and then, you should check your wireless access point manufacturer's website and see if there's an update for the firmware for your particular unit. If there is, download it and install it, and that will help keep your security vulnerabilities down to a minimum. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about some things you can do to implement security on your wireless computer network. We talked about how a wireless computer network works. We talked about some of the security holes that are, are present in a wireless computer network. And then we talked about some steps you can take to really lock down your wireless computer network and make it secure.